Hello and welcome to my channel. The story that I'm going to tell you now is about this particular property which I've now resided and have resided since my birth. But the thing about this property is that this property was damned from the start pretty much. We'll get into a few things but just to understand this property it's important that we start from the foundation. So here we are in the basement of my home. Uh, there's not really too much to see here other than it's just a basement. But that's where all the real fun starts. Now, this home was purchased in 1966 as a shell. The contractors, for whatever reason, it was unexplained, they up and left it. That's suspicious in its own right. But before we go any further, I want to note that this particular area in this township, and this side of the town, sits at 666 elevation above sea level. So there's our first omen right there that something could be amiss. Now, number two is this. This wall behind me here is not the original wall. You'll actually see that it looks to be, it appears to be poured brick. Now, that's very strategic in the fact that that wall is over two foot thick. It was actually built by my grandfather and his father. There's a bit of a very interesting story here. See, this property, even though it sits at 666 elevation, it's one of the lowest points in the township, meaning water will flow in here. This wall, is where my grandfather uh, was inspecting after a very bad rainstorm one time. And after that rainstorm, he started to notice that in between the little chickens here, uh, where can I see you here? In between the cracks of the brick, water started springing out. Now, as the story goes, both my grandparents are deceased, but my father, Mark, can recall this story very well. They were actually standing right here on the stairs. My grandmother was standing right here at the last step of the stairs and my grandfather, knowing what was about to happen, dove off of these stairs to the point to where he actually jumped over my grandmother. My grandmother tended to dolly around about a lot of things. She didn't take a lot of things serious. Now, this last step here, she was standing like this and that wall fell. It scraped the skin off the back of her heel. And water would eventually rise in this basement up to the rafters, as we can see here. Now, what makes this interesting is, had my grandfather not suddenly had this overwhelming feeling of fear and jumped from that wall over my grandmother to get out of here, he would have been pinned and drowned by the thousands of gallons of water that have been coming in this house. Now, why do I say all this in uh, precludes the hauntings and things like that? Well, here's the thing. Knowing what we know about this house, and its elevation, its history now, I reckon that this was the very first paranormal event that happened because there's a verse in the Bible where it talks about treading on the serpent, you know, we'll smash his head and he will bruise your heel. I believe that the scraping of my grandmother's heel was a mockery to where it was intended to kill my grandfather, but instead it just nipped at my grandmother, who would in turn, we'll get to that later. But I want to point out a few more things of this basement. Now, over here is the furnace. Now, this furnace is original to the house. It's a 1966 or 67 furnace. Now, what makes this unique is I had this feeling one day. I said, you really need to get up and check on that furnace. It was an early fall day. There was no need to use the furnace, but I just had this feeling. You need, you need to turn your furnace on. You need to check it. So that's what I did. And after a few minutes of sitting there, I started, I heard an alarm going beep, 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 beep. And I'm very droggy. And I'm, I'm, I'm very droggy and I'm not really quite understanding what's going on. And then it hits me, hey, stupid, that's your gas alarm going off. You're dying. You are being overcome with gas. And I was so overcome with gas, well, the fumes of, not the actual gas, the uh, combustion exhaust, the uh, carbon monoxide. I knew enough to get out of my house, but my kitty cats had actually run down these stairs. And I had to make a very quick decision and say, if they make it out, they'll have to make it out on their own. I can't go down into a basement where there's 500 parts per million carbon monoxide. That's, that's off the chart, that's fatal. Now, something else significant. So, so we, we now have there too, two near death experiences that have occurred in this home. Now, something else I wanna point out too is when I was a young child, I say young child, I'd say about 12 years old. We brought a Ouija board down here and played with it in the basement. And the thing, of the, the thing is, nothing happened at that time. 
But from that point forward, there's been tragedy after tragedy associated with the people who went through this property. But let's back up a little bit. Let's get back to the foundation, considering we are in the foundation. My father lived here with my mother back when they were teenagers, back in the 1980s. And even he recalled strange, weird occurrences in this house, and he referred to it as a battery. See, my grandmother was very mentally ill. She was very narcissistic. She was, she was very religious in the sense of religion. And you would try to mention to her when I was growing up, I said, you know, there, there is a devil and stuff. You know, not, not everything is uh, rainbows and butterflies. She goes, I don't believe in the devil. I don't believe in demons. And we know now, spiritual people, that that is demonic oppression to deny the very existence because it, it knew something was onto it. So my father referred it to a way to me. He goes, the house was already built at 666 elevation. It was built to where it could have flooded. Your grandfather was nearly killed by a wall that would have pinned him and drowned him. And it's like a battery that has been twisted to the side. So the house before my grandmother moved in was running. It, was, it wasn't good. It wasn't bad. But when she came here, she brought her mental illness. She brought her baggage. It was like putting two of the double A's in side by side instead of one crossed. It had the full energy to run. And we started seeing some pretty terrible freaking patterns go on here. You know, for example, my father had a complete mental breakdown in this house and he had to leave. I had a complete mental breakdown in this house and I nearly didn't come out of it. Um, they tried to use some medications for me and I, it was nearly fatal. But uh, there's come other people who have gone through this house. Obviously, my uncle who, who lived here, he died at a very young age, 50 years old. He, he was fine, had a heart attack and died. My mother, uh, she's had tragedy after tragedy after tragedy all of her life. My sister went through this house. She was so mentally abused. My sister, she had to tell my grandmother, I leave, I'm out, I'm gone. Because the presence in this house was so heavy. Now, uh, we learn to, we know that houses have personality. So I believe that my grandmother, although she was mentally ill, she was very oppressed by this house because she became obsessed with it. It had to be clean. It had to be perfect. It had to be this and that and the other. And when you get down to it, this is just a cheapo three-bedroom house. It cost $19,000 to build. It's not a mansion. Where does the obsession come from? Because this is what you call a stepping stone. You know, you get another house. But her obsessions and stuff do point to something being uh, very strange going on here. But this house is also very prone to blown circuits, cold spots, objects moving. Uh, I've personally been levitated off my bed. People won't believe me, but that is the truth. I have been levitated off my bed. And uh, just recently I came down here in the basement and uh, I was getting some, I was packing away some canned tomatoes. I was packing away some canned tomatoes and I had this overwhelming feeling of just dread and fear in this back corner here where we used to play with the Ouija board and all that. And I was just quite disturbed and I said, I rebuke you in Jesus Christ's name. And I ran back up the stairs. Now I've lived in this home for close to 30 years now. You would think that I'd be, you know, well uh, adapted to the vibes and the weirdness that goes on here. But there's something even weirder about this house, too, that even goes before the construction. We're back. We're going in reverse. We're going forward. I hope you can follow. The builder was in such a hurry to get rid of this thing that he never signed over. The, he never signed the deed or nothing. He just, shake my hand. It's yours. Goodbye. And that's very suspicious because what was it about the building of this house to where the builder who was a very well-known contractor at the time, just decided, I gotta get out of this thing. I gotta up and leave. He sold it as a shell. And the materials are, he told my grandfather basically, the materials are there, you pay me half the price for it, you finish it yourself, goodbye. And that's what happened. But I've noticed, you know, even when I'm trying to move away from this property, there's always little things that are keeping me here. And I don't quite understand that because like uh, my personal bankruptcy, I was gonna lose this property and come to find out there was a glitch in the paperwork to where I'm technically a squatter, even though, because it was bought on a handshake, so I won't lose this property. I, I couldn't move because I couldn't afford anything else. It's as if the house is wanting me to stay here. But, you know, we know that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is much stronger than any demon or any evil entity, so we'll be okay, even though a little bit tormented. But there is one major thing I want to point out. Now, being that this house is more of a psychological haunting versus a physical, which you, you will occasionally see physical things here, 
but they're not big and extravagant. You know, you'll hear the noise, you'll hear the footsteps, you'll have the, you'll have the levitation and stuff like that at your bed, but most of this is psychological. And I had this one point, I had this, this thought of suicide. Now, we know now that it, everybody gets it from time to time. It's just the same people pass it off, be like, <laughs> what's that? You know, that's stupid. And I thought to myself, I said, no, 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 that is not my thought. I rebuke that Jesus name and I command you to tell me what your name is. And I heard this voice in my mind. It said, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, male Aaron. And I'm like, Aaron. So if you research that name, Aaron would mean son of the devil. Okay, now listen to me a little farther here. I had a friend of mine. He wasn't a close friend, but he was like, he was a little bit autistic, but not bad. He cared for himself and everything. He was just mentally not all the way there. And he went home one night and after arguing with a girl, he uh, put a pistol in his mouth and shot himself. He died. But what's interesting is that family wanted to have paranormal investigators come. So the paranormal investigators come. And what is the voice that they heard? They heard multiple paranormal voices and several that said, Aaron pulled the gun. And then you hear another very distinctive voice say, I'm Aaron. So I don't know if Aaron was a particular demon that resided here. <laughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of crotch itch because uh, new shorts rubbing against me. Uh, we don't know if Aaron was a, uh, a demon that came here or was this something in the area because the elevation was at 666. But I do know that this particular friend came to my house and within a few days later he had shot himself. And I was sleeping in my bed here in this house and uh, sometimes I have hypnagogic hallucinations, which is slight hallucinations while falling asleep. Now, what makes this interesting is I seen the half of a man's face looking back at me with a green eye at exactly 12.30 a.m. 12.30 a.m. was the very hour and, you know, 30 minutes later, in which he put the pistol in his mouth and shot himself. So I don't know if this something was intended bad from here. It said, okay, I, we got to leave Guy alone. Guy's been here forever. He's not going to do anything. And just transferred over to him. But I've seen that, okay? Uh, there's astral projections very bad in this house. Uh, astral projection. And then, you know, for what, there's been moments too where I just had this overwhelming just desire to drink alcohol. You know, like that's not good either. Um, but the plan is now is to leave this property and uh, I'm going to leave most everything behind. There's really nothing here worth keeping. I'm going to leave everything behind and uh, we're going to start over new because uh, this property, the very foundation, the very root of this property is complete negativity. Oh, I forgot to mention earlier why this property was acquired by my grandfather and why he sought out such a cheap property to begin with. Uh, he was the owner of a gas station back in the 1960s, I believe 62, something like that. And uh, he worked at this gas station pretty much nonstop because he said he couldn't, uh, he couldn't trust people. He had a big issue with cigarette theft. His cigarette cartons would come in, he'd open them to put them on the shelves and there'd be like a block of wood or something in them. And uh, what happened was his wife went and cheated on him with the dentist, took the kids away, got him for child support, and he, being a very, very bad diabetic, had an issue with longevity of work. He was a good worker. He ended up retiring at the end of his life from a 30-year span of being a welder. But in certain parts of his life, keep in mind that he was living in the 60s and 70s where we don't have the modern medicine, he would go long periods of in a coma or hospitalization because of his diabetes. So, when he, so he needed a place to live because he had obviously been raped on child support. And because of this, <laughs> because of this, he was not able to afford a fancy new house. So he bought this one as a shell. So this house was literally bought out of sadness too. Um, I don't really have much good to say about it. We'll get some more videos on the outside, but you know, I, I would share some of the stories here if you guys want to hear them. Most of them are psychological hauntings, mind games, stuff like that. And uh, you could argue that I'm crazy, but the issue with that is if I'm crazy, so would so it would have to be three generations of multiple different people from different families. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, this is my uh, moderately haunted house. You know, I'm not really proud or anything to say that. But I hope you enjoyed it.